Well, happy Wednesday. I am Scott Schulte, otherwise known as the Cow Guy. This is, oh, what is it, uh, Market Day Report. I just remembered. Doing too many shows. I'm a small brain. Let's take a look and see how the overnights fared for us. And, folks, I'm just not getting that feeling that we had last spring, or this recent spring, when we were having a trouble getting the, the, the crop in the ground. We had a little bit of a, you know, a bump up yesterday and the day before. But uh, overnight, it just doesn't seem like we kind of took off again and added to those gains. So here we go. Corn overnight down a half cent in sap to uh, 402, and then we're unchanged in the Deese to 417 and a quarter. So that's not uh, a rip your face off rally by any means. Uh, beans, it was, I think it was a little worse. Yeah, it was. Overnight, uh, August was down four cents to 1113 and a half, but the Nulb was down six and a quarter cents to 1069 and a quarter. So uh, that's, uh, that's what we got going on for us. So we didn't really add on anything. Yeah, we, we still could. I'm not, call, I'm not throwing in the towel, but. Uh, wheat in Chicago was off by about, uh, I don't know, three cents across the board. Two and a quarter cents in SEP. 540 and a half was last there. March is down three cents to 585 and three quarters. Hard red, Kansas City, that too was lower. All the wheats were lower, at least when I did the radio show. So maybe something has changed. Hopefully it has, actually. September uh, hard red in Kansas City is down four and a half. 562 and a quarter's last is two and a quarter cents off the low of the day there. But look at the, the range is only six and a half cents. So that's no big deal, is it? Uh, March is down four and a quarter cents there to 592 and a half. Let's move out to the spring wheat. That's down six and a quarter cents in uh, Minneapolis. That's the SEP, 609 and a quarter's last there. And we've got a March board down five cents to 642 and a half. But here's where the wheels fall off in cotton. 179 points lower there to 67.69. And that's only 19 points off the low of the day. Let's bring on our next guest analyst or at the beginning of uh, the day. He's the guy that we kick off with, Brian Hoops. He's with Midwest Market Solutions. He's the president there, so we have to give him his due. That's a big corner office. He's got a huge view out the windows there, I'm sure. Um, all right, brother, uh, overnight really wasn't uh, spectacular. So what are we meant to glean from that? Yeah, good morning, Scott. Yeah, you know, not a lot of excitement in the overnight markets, a little bit lower prices once again. Um, the first leg of that uh, qual quality tour that's going on in North Dakota, the hard red spring wheat tour, found record yield potential in the spring wheat crop in southern and east central uh, North Dakota. So the so far, the first day of the tour, 52 and a half bushels per acre is their yield estimate. And you compare that to the five-year average, that's 10 bushels an acre more than what they found over the last five years. And it's uh, up from last year's numbers as well, over four bushels an acre. So the potential's there to have a massive spring wheat crop. We think the potential's there for big corn and soybean crops this year as well. Now, the grain markets did have a bounce over the last uh, you know several days soybeans soybean meal both hit their 50 percent retracements which means that over the last dollar drop that we've had in soybeans we've rallied back 50 cents uh, as in a technical correction it plus some of that heat that's moving into uh, the western corn belt could look like it might move into the eastern belt so we've had a lot of short covering given us this big rally but yesterday we saw that farmer selling uh, kick in it, you know by the end of the day we are well off session highs in the wheat and the corn and the soybeans and i feel that that was a real strong sign that the farmer is selling and they have a lot of crop to sell on rallies not only old crop but there's only maybe eight to ten percent of the new crop corn and soybeans have been sold for this fall as well ah, well um do you get the you remember the old players cards we used to have on the floor like you could see who was buying yeah. who was on do you ever do you have any sort of like uh iteration of that now or is it just word of mouth i mean i don't i don't know how it works when you just stare at the screen all day it, it, yeah it's hard now that uh, nobody's on the floor I mean, like you know the days that you talk about uh, the floor days you could find out who was buying who was selling um it's hard to determine which agency is doing what but we can still get that information you know pj quaid from rj o'brien's awesome as far as giving us that information of, of how many contracts are being bought especially in the options pits so it gives you you know a good indication of what's happening or, or who's doing it and it's not so much just how the market moves it's the why it's doing it right and and, uh, and and that's what we we're seeing here yesterday and in, in the overnight. And so I asked that question because did you get a feeling that there was decent fun buying over the last two days? Um, yeah, you know, it's just short covering basically by the funds, just right. kind of lightening the loads, kind of those weak, weak handed funds. They really are entrenched to the short side in, in the grains. They did buy some of those positions back, but I think they're willing to put them back on uh, if we start to show some technical weakness. I also think that uh, they also know that, um, you know, as the calendar goes, that puts more pressure on the producer, right? I mean, either they got to move stuff, make rooms, you know, there has to, you know, the, right now the, the ball's in their court. They got to do something. I mean, you may see some more short covering from, say, the weaker funds, I suppose, 
Um, yeah. But uh, the, the, the clock is on the fund side, I would say, yes? I, I would tend to agree with that, yeah. You know, there's there's some producers who are felt well enough off financially, have enough storage that maybe they don't have to sell last year's crop. They can hold on to it for another year. But at some point, bins get full, have to be replaced. They have to move that product. And a lot of it is going to be moved here in the next 30 to 45 days. Basis levels remain fairly tight. Um, I. I think they probably softened up a little bit because there was some movement yesterday. But yeah, over the next 30, 45 days, most people are going to sweep those bins out in preparation for this new crop that's going to get harvested and then stored once again. All right, great stuff. Stay right there, though. We need to go away. We're going to pay some bills. We're going to come back and talk more with Brian Oops. He's the president of Midwest Market Solutions, Springfield, Missouri. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Market Day Report. Why don't we remind ourselves how well we did in the livestock yesterday? Because we did do, do uh, it was pretty good, and, and that's going to make you feel good. We'll see how if we can sustain the gains, right? Let's take a look and see what we had going on in live cattle. Uh, look at that. August up two dollars and thirty-seven cents to one eighty-six thirty. We had uh, December up a buck thirty-seven to one eighty-seven forty. So we were happy about that yesterday, and let's see if we can continue that happiness here again today. Feeders, safe tech on some. You know, they slowly but surely just ground higher yesterday. We got an August board up $2.35 to $2.5875. And October, well, that's up $2.17 to $2.5842. And then finally, let's uh, take a lean hogs. Uh, they also had some strength, about a buck 25 on average across the board. August was up a buck 27 to 93.65. And we had a buck 47 gain in the Deese to 69.42. Let's bring him back in, Brian Hoops, Midwest Market Solutions. Brian, thanks for sticking around. Um, I sit in this chair all, long, all, all day, all, all, all the time, but it seems like uh, that market, you know, we're just where we left off. Are we going to continue in that same vein today and make it uh, nice and smooth, or are we going to back up a little bit? What do you think? Well, I think you're going to see a kind of a mixed opening this morning. I, I do think August wants to continue to gain against the other contracts um, because of its discount to the cash markets. But you look at what's happening in the stock market. We're getting pounded here this morning already, and it looks to me like a change of trend in, in the S&P futures anyway. So we may have you know, a pullback there. I think that's going to weigh on the consumer. It's going to weigh on the, the feedlot, the packer. Uh, it's it, you know, just from the mental standpoint that uh, you know, stock market's kind of been propping up our, our markets here to an extent. If that starts to weaken, you don't have a lot of good fundamental news for this cattle market. Packer margins pretty deeply in the red, $61. Uh, negative right now. We haven't seen any cash trade yet, but that could come at, at lower money. Packers do seem to be trying to slow their kills down a little bit to prop up their box beef, which was down again yesterday. There's just not that much you know, positive news for this cattle market. And, and maybe the one thing has been the stock market. If that starts to weaken, maybe we see a little bit of a sell-off from some of these algorithm and fund traders. Yeah, you're right. I mean, everybody feels wealthy because their stock portfolio has done well. And I just checked when you were talking about that, the futures for the Dow are down around 200 and the S&P are off about 50. So, yeah, it could be a, a difficult opening. And it was mainly on the back of the fact we had some uh, artificial intelligence or like, say, Alphabet or Google. Uh, they reported and a lot of them beat on the top and bottom line. But uh, the market just didn't like some of the line items that they had in the reports. Um, some of them had some bigger borrowings or, or the likes. And so they, they all kind of kind of ran for the door uh, at once last night, right? Right. Yeah, it's absolutely. And, you know, I think it kind of started last week, started to show some uh, cracks in, in the technical foundation for this uh, stock market, to, you know, breaking some uh, trend indicators, breaking key support, rallying back uh, to that support, then gapping lower overnight. None of that is uh, very positive from a technical standpoint. And I think it could bleed over that cattle market. And again, the cattle do not have that strong of a fundamental base to support itself. It could easily be pulled lower here by that, uh, you know, those fund traders and, and algorithm type traders. Right, we're going to talk more about that on the cow guy close tonight, but may Nancy Tangler, we had on the show yesterday or the day before, I can't remember, but she's one of the best in the business. And she says we're just beginning a long-term bull market here, which, uh, so I'm going to look at this as an opportunity. I'm not going to be afraid of it, but I think everybody else should too. But take, keep an eye on that thing, because if we do get some decent pullbacks in that stock market, it could be life-changing for some people if they got in at the right time here for the next 10 or 15 years. So although there it's scary go. today, thanks, Brian, we're like, you know, um, uh, uh, although it's scary today, it could be something that could really benefit you for, you know, a while.